Welcome back to another episode of the In Pursuit Podcast. My name is James Crowley. It is great to have you here. And today we have a solo episode. So usually I try to bring some guests on, try to get, bring some people in so you can learn from them and also I can learn from them. Because that's kind of the, the whole aim of the podcast really is for me to to learn through others. So I bring people on, having insightful, engaging conversations with them that I can learn from them. But then by a proxy of me learning from them, you also learn. So while listening to us, you take some stuff from what they're saying. And that's kind of the aim, really, of the podcast is a bit of a self-exploration expression of kind of myself and themselves and kind of me kind of drawing out what they know inside in them, you know, if that makes sense. That's kind of where where I hope to see the podcast going is in that kind of a thing, you know, not really trying to learn about people and what they do, trying to learn about people and how they operate inside and trying to bring out the good and the, the value and the insights that they have inside in them, you know. So that's kind of where I hope to see it going. But today we have something different. It's going to be a solo episode. And let me know, do you like these solo episodes? Would you like to see more of these solo episodes of where I just speak myself? Because I feel when I am in, in like, in, well, I don't say interviewing. I don't like the word, I don't like to use the word interviewing because it's not in, in an interview. And so that's the formal way of saying it. But I just see it as a conversation between me and the guests that I'm bringing on, you know, and it's just a friendly conversation. And as well, I don't want them to feel like it's an interview or an interrogation, you know, it's just it's a friendly conversation the same way we would have it if the camera wasn't rolling you know that's kind of what I'm trying to do you know just trying to listen try to get them to feel comfortable about expressing and you know showcasing what they know you know but today I'm speaking about the 50 50 500 charity run that I completed just under two weeks ago and it was a major success better than I ever ever could have expected people ask me how was it how was the body after it how are you feeling and we're going to get into all of that but just before we do get in, I just want to say a massive thank you to Band and Co-op, who are the main sponsors of the charity run. They were awesome. They when, Once I told them what I was doing, they were extremely interested. They were like, yes, we want to be part of this. We see what you're doing. And it's for some local charities and we want to be part of that. So a big thank you to them for being the main sponsor and helping me out so much in, in terms of just getting it off the road, getting it up and running. Because at the start, I was doing the run, but obviously I was raising money for charity and it was a little bit difficult trying to raise funds and get the get the sponsorships in and they really helped me out in that way and they really kind of kick-started it for me so really big 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 thanks to them um, as our main sponsor so the Bandit Co-op 500 charity run how did it all go how was it and as I said there's no words that I can like even find still for it. I'm still trying to figure out like why it went so well how it went so well but I suppose there's no, no need to figure it out as well the preparation and everything with it that I put into it was the reason that it went so well you know and I feel on the run as well. This is I've only said this to a couple of people. I feel on the run. I wasn't running that I wasn't on the run alone. I was running that side like there was someone by my side throughout the whole run. Someone that you that you that wasn't been able that wasn't seen by others, but I knew he was there. And for me that was that was God, that was the Lord, whatever way you want to say it. He was running that run with me. Because I knew and I asked him going into the run, I was like be by my side, help me through it, or, you know, run every step with me. And that's kind of how it went, you know. that's That was one thing that I did at the start that I haven't really spoken about because I feel like not many people are going to be, like, of understanding of it. They're like, yeah, well, yeah, whatever, go away out of that kind of stuff. But that's that's truly how I believed it. I I went in, I'd nev- I, I didn't run a single metre of that run by myself. I was with him the whole way throughout. And, of course, I had my brother, I had my friends. There was people joining me at the end. It was awesome, you know. But I suppose let's just go back to the very start of it. I don't want to kind of have this on a meandering different different areas. Let's just go back to the to the morning and how it all started. So I suppose the aim of the run, we started out, the goal was to get started at half six to start running because I had anticipated that the run was going to take me seven and a half hours. That's kind of how I planned it. So I had an eight hour, we'll say, time limit that I had given myself to 500 minutes. was about eight hours. But I knew from my training, from everything I've done, in the preparation that I was going to get it done within eight hours, no problem. I I expected seven and a half. So if I left at half six in the morning, that was going to bring me up to two o'clock in the day that I would arrive at Bean and Berry, which is which was the finish line. And at two o'clock, that was like when I said I was going to be there. So I was going to be. I said I was going to arrive in at two o'clock so that so that people could gather, they could support, and also the barbecue that we had after for the charity was also there. So that was the goal. Was they run into Bean and Berry at two o'clock? So I needed to backtrack. I needed to work backwards to figure out what time I had to leave. So half six was the leave was the time we had to leave. But we got there and we started, I think, about 10 minutes later. So we started at 20 to 7. So in my head, I was like, oh, no, we're 10 minutes behind already. i got to make this time up. 
But um, we got going. I had Tiger Donovan. I had Mario Gabriel with me from the start. We ran the first seven kilometers, and we had some great. It was it was a great run. Great, great first seven k. Had some good crack with them. And the the run from Garrettstown Beach up around the old head down to the spec, which is the first part of the run, was it's such a it's such an enjoyable run. Like the the scenes, the route itself. There's a few pulls. There's a few nice downhills. Um, it's an enjoyable run overall, you know, and to do it with them was brilliant. So they kind of drove me on. And from there, then I was on my own for a good stretch. Then I had a couple of kilometers up until the 13 kilometers was my next little, I'd say, waypoint, you could call it, or my next target. So I had broken the run down into different segments for myself, really. And I suppose as well for people to join me, because I put out a post the week, the, the week before that with the different places that people can join me to run. And it was actually good for my own mind as well. Instead of like having to take on the 50 kilometers, I was just taking on each little segment, if that made sense. So like that first stop was from Garrettstown to the spec, which was seven kilometers. So that was the first little segment. And once I was done, all right, on to the next one. And being able to break it down into those little segments and those little sections really helped me, to be honest, because I was even saying it to, to someone I was running at towards the end that... I was on my second last segment and I hadn't even thought about the finish. I hadn't even thought about the last part. I was looking at the next segment, getting to the next stop on time because I'd given like a time zone, like a 20 minute gap or a 20 minute slot that I was going to arrive at each seg- at, the, at each section. So I was kind of focused on making sure I hit that within the time. And most of the times I was actually ahead. So I had to kind of pull back a little bit, which was which is testament to show how, how well I was doing, you know, that I had to actually pull back that I was going too fast almost for my expected time. But yeah, we'll go back to the first little section. So we got the first 7K done. Felt very good. Um, I suppose kind of nutrition-wise as well. I had that morning I had what I usually have when I'm running. Nice big bowl of oats, some blueberries, an apple, honey. Um, and yeah, this, and then as I was going to the beach, I was snacking on an apple. So it's kind of the food I had before the run. And then during the run, I had Nutrigan bars, I had gels, I had electrolytes in water, I had carbohydrate mix in water as well. So my goal was to sip on and get in around 70 to 80 grams of carbs an hour. That was my goal while running. And that's kind of what I was aiming for between gels, Nutrigan bars, and also the, the drink, the carbohydrate drink and electrolyte drink that I was having. So nutrition wise went very well. So after that 7k, the next stop was Sandy Cove. So this, I knew this route was going to be a little bit hilly because I ran it a good few times in my training. So 7k to the 13k mark, we got to Sandy Cove. So yeah, between the 7k, very went, went very straightforward. I thought it went very well. And on that segment, I actually made up the 10 minutes that I had lost at the start. So I was bang on time going to Sandy Cove. Like I was meant to get in there, I think, about, was it like 8 and 10 past 8 or something around that mark? That was my goal to get in there at that time. And I got in there um, on right on time. So I was delighted. I right on time, stopped in, have a, had some quick water, had some... Um, had a bar thing there as well. And so from the 13k mark, my little brother, he actually decided to come out and start running with me. Because I was going at a steady pace. So he was like, yes, I'll come I'll come run, run with you. Because I told him it was a steady, it was a flat route, the next kind of three or four kilometers. So he joined me for the next three or four kilometers, which was awesome. So I was running with him. That was that was really cool, being able to run with him. And because um, I suppose I had, my, I had my two brothers with me, Peter and Aiden, they were with me for the whole run. So Aiden was driving. He was the escort car for me, the car in front, just to make sure you know, it was safe. He was driving in front or he was driving behind to make sure the cars weren't flying past. Because when people were running with me, I wanted to make sure it was safe. So he helped me out massively by being that person who followed me around for the day. So my two younger brothers, they were awesome. Can't really, really grateful that they were there. Um, and it was good fun as well, Joe. If, if I ever caught up with him or if I ever had a chat with him, it was always a bit of crack in, in the window, you know. So that really helped me out through it as well. And then seeing, seeing Peter run with me as well, my little brother, was running with him was, it was epic. Um, and he ends up running about 10 kilometers up the whole route which was epic uh, so so proud of him so yeah we got to the Sandy Cove got over those hills um, and Sandy Cove the next stop then was Barrels Cross if you're familiar near Kinsale so on that from Sandy Cove there's a couple of kilometers but then there's a big hill up Ring Finnan or Ring Roan direction if you're familiar with it kind of the back road of the main Barrels Cross to Kinsale road um, if you're listening to this and you're not familiar with the area you'll have no idea what I'm talking about but uh, that's how I'm going to break it down so that was from the 13 kilometer mark to the 20 kilometer mark that was the next section that I had to get through and on kilometer 17 there was actually a neighbour of mine Pat Reardon was extremely how would you say extremely kind to come out and run with me because um, that was a really big boost because I was on my own for that section 
So for him to come out, join me for those couple of kilometres to the next section was brilliant. So we got to the 20k mark. That's when I stopped again. Had got some more um, fluids on. Got, I think I got a bar maybe and a gel on. Because the next section was a seven kilometre um, run again down to Benedi village. So I think I only, I only stopped. I only wanted to stop for like maximum four or five minutes. Because if I stopped for any longer than that, it kind of would be difficult to get myself going again. So that was it. I think I stopped for maybe three or four minutes. And we got headed off again. A couple of hills again down to Benedi village. So we made it to Benedi village. And this is when it really started to get um, epic. Because I, I ran into the village and there was like a big crowd there. I think there was like 13, 14 people in the village. And it was really cool because there was cheering. They had stayed um, posters and everything. They're like, go on James. And it was... It was such a cool, surreal moment, to be honest. Like, it was, like, running in. I was running in with Pat. I was running in with my brother. And that was that was really cool. Like, that was a really special moment there. And, you know, seeing that support from the community and seeing the support from everyone was huge. It really kind of drove me on because when I did start, or when I did plan out this run at the start, you know, plan out this uh, challenge, I didn't expect a huge amount of support from the community. I would have hoped for it, of course, but I didn't expect half. I didn't. I didn't expect anywhere near the support that was given by the community. So, really proud of everyone. Really, really glad that everyone kind of got on board. Like so, so Bellady Village was the twenty-seven kilometer mark, and was feeling really good to that point. Everything was going well. I was, I was thinking I was, I was again bang on time again because I had pulled. I was thinking I was ahead of time, but twenty-five kilometer mark. So I kind of pulled back a little bit, slowed down a little bit, um, to a steady jog, so that I get into Bellady at the right time. So from there again, stopped for I think for three or four minutes again, chatting, to, chatting to the people there. Got a banana on board, got some more water and stuff on board. And then there's another another guy joined me, Darren Knox. He's actually been on the podcast previously. A good friend of mine. He joined me in Banladee. So Pat was still with us. So there's three of us. We were jogging from Peter's. I think he was my little brother was with us still for this parent. I think he was. Yeah, he was with us from the village all the way to the next. Um, the next um, section or the next stop which was the Seven Crosses out near Kilmax Simon if you're familiar with that that was our next kind of stop or next waypoint so that was that was I think there was four kilometres off the road so that wasn't too bad it was nice and flat this mo- most of this section so we got there in good time and we only stopped at I think at Seven Crosses for like two minutes Pat had went Pat went home at the stage he got picked up he had to go away to his Saturday morning so I think there was a GA training or there was a GA match on so he had to do the the um the collections and the drop offs for that. So it was me and Dara, we struck on up towards Kildara direction. Um for the next section of the run. He joined yeah, he stayed with me for I think another three or four kilometers and then he struck off back home because he lives near Kilmax Simon. So it was actually a nice bit of a, a jog and a run for him that morning as well. So I think it was on the 34, 35 kilometer mark. All going well, still feeling good. It was that little section actually between the thirty one kilometer mark to the thirty four kilometer mark is when I really started to struggle. That was when I really felt like I was hitting some kind of a wall or something, just just, just a little bit. That was when I had to really kind of like push, like dig a little bit deeper than I had to, to do for the rest of the run, you know. And it was actually good because Darrow was telling a story. Um, <laughs> how much of it I took in now? It was actually, it was it was quite interesting. I remember it was quite interesting. He was talking about, I'd, I'd, I don't want to go into the full details of it. He was talking about this group of guys who went to the to the North Pole. They were trying to be the first guys to reach the North Pole and how they survived for so many months just by themselves out in the freezing cold, literally deserted out in the middle of the, the snow and the ice in that cold weather and how they were able to get through and make it back home, which was, which was, it was actually great, him telling me that story because it was a distraction from the difficulty I was feeling and he didn't know it because I was just trying to, like I wasn't trying to, say oh I'm struggling now I need to slow down I was just I was in my mind I just wanted to keep pushing keep going so him telling that story was actually helpful get me to kind of get me through that little bit of a little bit of a a slump you could say almost a little bit that just that short phase so after yeah so I think he left around the 34 mark so I had a couple of kilometers again on my own and I actually enjoyed running on my own because I was just kind of me I was able to just kind of be with myself be on my own because it's like when you're running with people you're chatting away it's great it's, it's it's a good distraction and it's good to be able to run with people. Like I love running with people. But I think those that time, those little little um, sections on my own, I actually really enjoyed. I was just be able to be present. This is a story I was here. I was kind of taking it all in. Um, no headphones or nothing. Just tried to jump, enjoy the moment. Um, and then I got to, I think I got to about kilometre 35, 36, if I'm right. 
around that mark anyway. And Roland joined me, another good friend of mine. He said he was going to join me at some stage. And he joined me, I think, around the 35, 36 kilometer mark. And then we struck off. Then he stayed with me, I think, for seven or eight kilometers. So it was brilliant. He stayed with me. I know he started, he came to me on, I'd say, 34. And he left around maybe the 40, 41 mark. And so that was great because this last section was the section that I hadn't run. I'd, I'd run it before, but not in as a fatigue state as I was. I'd run it at like an early stage. Like that would have been like, I would have been warmed up by, or I would have been fresh after f- food. And it would have been like this early stage of my run. Let's say I might have done it in the first 10 kilometers. But I was doing this section after already running 35 kilometers, if that makes sense. You know, so it's going to be that, that bit more difficult. So struck on, attacked, attacked those big hills. He helped me through it. And we were still ahead of time. And on that route as well, two lads drove past, blew the horn, Richie and Jack. Uh, really glad that, you know, they were out driving past, seeing where I was at. Because I had, I'd say anybody found me because I had to tr- I had tracking on, so my live tracking. So everyone was kind of able to see where I was, see where I was. And I'm actually glad I had the tracking because I found out afterwards from the feedback from people is that they loved watching where I was at. And like, oh, he's here now. Oh, he's there. He's so they were able to watch my every move. It was kind of cool. Uh, so I'm actually glad that I put that on and people were able to follow me and there was a lot more people following me than I had expected so yeah that was good we reached 40, 40 kilometer mark and Roland struck off back home he yeah he, he had I think he had work on for the day so he had to get he had to strike off back so I was really grateful and really glad that he was able to join me for that section um, again it was all super enjoyable the whole run was so so enjoyable to be honest and then we got to kilometer 41 and I was I was so far ahead of time at this stage I actually had to stop for like seven or eight minutes, so that I wouldn't be ahead of time, because the next my next meeting point was Krishnalov. If you're familiar with it, it's um it's kind of that small little crossroads between Baladi and Kilbritton. If you're familiar with it, and that was kind of the next stop or the next meeting point. So I had to stop like five hundred meters down the road just to kind of just I got some food in there, stopped for a while. Um, just so I'd be on time going in there because I knew there was going to be people meeting me there so I wanted to make sure that I, give, that I didn't arrive early and I was actually gave, gave them the time to meet me um, so that was like the next spot where there was a big crowd again and it was it was epic I think there was another 10 or 12 people there just the neighbours around you know and they're all they again had had flags and cork flags out with the red and white courses um, there was a couple of batters with Go James Drive Lon James and Everyone was just cheering as we're running in, and I was running in again with Peter, my brother. So that was that was epic again. It was so cool because you know they're, they're cheering for you, but it's like it's it's just I don't know how to use. It. I don't know how to explain it really. Like it's just this, it's this, it's good. It's just this awesome feeling. You're just like wow, we're like it's they're cheering you on. And it's like gives you that kind of buzz and that drive, and it's um it's really really cool. And then to do it with my brother again was was epic. Like uh, so we got in there. I think we stopped for three or four minutes. I'm getting a little bit of water, took some pictures, and from there, then we that was the 42 kilometer mark. So that was the longest distance I've ever ran before. So that was the marathon uh, distance. Because my last, my longest run on the on the training for this for this challenge was 42 kilometers. So it was a full full marathon. So I hadn't went over that, but I knew once it once I hit the 42, that I'd be able to finish off the last eight, no problem, you know. So I was confident I could finish that off. So we struck off again, me and my brother, and for this part of it, Aoife Kelly joined me. Again, a good friend from the gym. She 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 was actually, she actually lived down the road, so it wasn't too bad. She, she was able to meet me there. And we struck off down the road, and this was another, a bit of a downhill for the start, but then there was a couple of hills along the way. And it was great to have her there as well. She was able to drive me on, and the brother again. And again, it was going, going well. But I felt we were at the kilometer, I think it was kilometer maybe... 36, 37 and I had to kind of walk there were there stages I was walking for time as well like I wasn't I wasn't jogging all of this I wasn't running all of this uh, non-stop like I was running slash walking and then there's parts where I stopped you know for food, drink, whatever and there's times I had to stop just to pull back on time you know so I think this one was jog, walk, jog, walk um, just to keep it going a couple of tough hills there as well so we got through them Again, really, really fun. I think then we got to the 38 kilometer mark. This was the last two kilometers. And then there's another group joining us at the, at the Garrett Sound Woods. And again, like it was it was during that last section that Aoife had asked, Aoife, I told Aoife that I, we were talking, I don't know what we're talking about. And it's like, I wasn't even focused on the next section. I was just focused on getting to the next point. And the next point was Garrett Sound Woods where we were meeting the next lot of people. And 
as I said, that's kind of how we're, that's how we made it easier for me for, for myself as well. Was break it down into those small little sections, those small little things that I could just tick off. Um, instead of looking at this, all right, I need to get to the end. It's fifty kilometers at the end. It's forty five kilometers to the end. Just forty kilometers left. I was just in my head, right? Oh, it's only four kilometers to the next stop. Nice. It's only three kilometers to the next stop. It's only seven kilometers to the, ne- to the next stop. And approaching it and looking at it in that way really, really helped. Just made it so much easier. And as well, just just to just to put in that point as well, I was at kilometer thirty, and I think it was Pat had asked me or what. And uh, how was that? How was how are you feeling so far? And I literally turned to him. I was like, "That was the easiest thirty kilometers I've ever ran." And not being that was just, that's just me being honest. That's how, exactly how I felt. I was like, "That was the easiest thirty kilometers I've ever run my whole life." And it was the heaviest kilometer, heaviest thirty kilometers I've ran, and probably the fastest as well with that weight. Um, so like it shows I could have pushed a lot faster, a lot harder, um, with that weight. But it was still a pretty pretty good feat, regardless. So we're at the 48 kilometer mark. There's more. We we got to Kilbertton Woods or Gerton Woods, and then that's when Gerton Woods or Bansfield Woods, probably Bansfield Woods. But anyway, it's just that section there. Um, the road from the road from the the cross to being in Berry. That road there, if that makes sense. Uh, so we got to the woods there, and I think there's another. How many joined me there? I think there could have been like ten, seven or eight joined me there. From the Corsi, great to see those guys out. Um, had more people from Bandon co- join me as well, so I think we had about nine or ten from there to 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 jog in the last couple of kilometers. And as well, I think half about a kilometer on the road, there's more guys, more more young lads from the Corsi ABC Boxing Club joined in as well. And it was great to see all these guys. So I think we had a, we had a nice group to finish off the last couple of kilometers. And um, again, we were kind of ahead, we were slightly ahead of time, so we pulled back a little bit, kept it steady. Even though it was Margaret and Aoife, they wanted to drive on down the road. <laughs> and I'd kind of call out to them, ladies, ladies, it's holding up, holding up. We're a little bit ahead of time. And, and also it was difficult as well to kind of keep running. Like So I wanted it nice and steady, keep myself going. And from there, then it was last last couple of kilometers, last 500 meters. The cousin, more more people started joining in because people had caught the road a little bit. Cousins started joining in, other people started joining in. And I'd say there was about 20 of us running down at 20 or even more running down to the line. Um, they went to Bean and Berry, and there was a massive crowd there. I'd say there was about thirty people, maybe, maybe even forty people at Bean and Berry, like waiting for us. And it, that was that was epic. Like I was running down the hill, I could see all the people, I could hear the cheering, and like I almost wanted to start crying. To be honest, like it was, it was the fact that we had done this big, big challenge. We'd got it done. I was running again with my brother by my side. Um, my brothers with me. My two brothers were, were with me for the whole journey. There was a big crowd of being a berry all cheering me on, you know. It was there was a lot of emotions on that, like, and it was kinda I was I had to kinda work hard to almost hold back the tears and hold back the emotions as well. Um but it was I also tried to just like take it in. I was like, This is this is what it this is what it's all about. This is what you need to be doing more of. Like this is these are the moments that do you know what I mean you want to do more, you want to have more of like you know, where you're doing something epic, you're doing something where people are supporting you and people want to be part of like you're part of like you've you've created this like mission that people are kind of part of and they want to be part of something bigger than themselves and this was far bigger than myself you know um this was something that i was you know helping two great charities the community was on board um but yeah running into that finish line was epic um they had a bit of red red and white tape ran through that at the end and it was it was epic man having all those people there cheering you on family friends people from the community it was epic like Epic is just a word I keep using, you know. And uh, from there, like people just people obviously come over to you. I was, you know, I was trying to engage with everyone to say thank you so much for being there. And I was still, I still had a vest on at this stage, and people were like, "You don't even look like you, you even ran fifty kilometers." They were like, "Why, why do you, you don't even look tired?" And I, I think I left a vest on for like six or seven, or maybe even ten minutes after that, just talking to people, and they're like, "Are you going to take the vest off at all?" No, and then I was. I was like, no, I actually, this actually feels pretty comfortable. I might leave this on, you know, it's like, it's like you've done this thing now. It's like, no, I don't want to take it off. And that's kind of how it felt at the end. Um, but I did take it off. People were able to kind of like lift it and hold it and be like, holy God, that is heavy. That is, that is legit, you know, <laughs> to run with that. People were asking like, how are you so fresh? How, like, it looks so easy. You're running in there and it like, you look like you didn't even run anything. And to be honest, that's exactly how it felt. It felt like I hadn't done 50 kilometers with that much weight. It felt like I hadn't been out for seven and a half hours. It felt like I was out for maybe three or four hours. It felt like I'd ran 
Definitely not 50. Didn't feel like I was running with that much weight. It was just... It was. It felt easy. Like, that's just, that's just plain, simple words I'm going to use. It, just, it felt so much easier than I had expected. You know, and I think that all came down to the preparation that I did beforehand, you know. The training I had did, Roland even said it on the, on, the, on, the, on the part that I was running with him. He was like, you've done the preparation. It's why it's so easy now, you know what I mean? It's This is the celebration. This is the... Um, the easy part you know the training you've done the months beforehand was the difficult part this is now the easy part this is the the celebration of all the training and all the work you've done and um yes yeah, so there's a couple of things like one one thing i was that i really made sure i locked in was my mental preparation like i was making sure i was preparing myself mentally as much as i was physically you know because i that's something i really started to understand is how powerful your mind your body your spirit everything is when they're all in tune with each other you know like if physically you can be in top shape but if your mind if if if, if the drive inside isn't there then you're not going to perform as well as you want to do you know so that's why I was big on trying to get that in tune as well um so like one thing that really one thing that really helped from the very start and I kind of I, I was doing it kind of like I wasn't kind of doing it on purpose from the start it's kind of something I just started doing I think maybe from just learning from different things but it's the fact that I was doing a 50 kilometer run with 50 pounds and this was a big big challenge like people were, people were listening to this and they're like this is this is massive there's no way you're going to be able to do that and if I had approached that in that way in my mind it would have been so much more difficult I probably would have quit I probably would have given up but in my head from the very start I was making this sound like a tiny little run this was this was nothing no no it's nothing that's why almost in my head people were asking like you've done this big thing I'm like eh, not really it's just, just a 50 kilometer run it's nothing nothing major but that's that's because that's how I was approaching it in my mind and in my head. That's how I was looking at it. Because if I made this sound like this big, huge, humongous challenge, I have, I've already like kind of um, lost to it, if, if that makes sense, you know. So for me to be able to look at it as if it's just something smaller, something easy, something not as big as it is, I was able to, you know, go in and not let it defeat me. I had the upper hand, if that makes sense, you know. It's, it's kind of using that tactic of, make it seem smaller than what it is so that you are so that you feel that you are well capable of taking it on you know so that's something that really helped me from the start from the start throughout that's exactly how I approached it and just, that's kind of why that's kind of how I still have it in my mind it was just this easy run because my mental preparation was so good from the very very start and that's something I've learned a lot from that run as well is that your mind once you're in that state that it's easy you can do this um, it just becomes so much easier so that was one big thing as well. And obviously the physical part of the training was super important, making sure that I was right. Um, like I spent 16 weeks in total of training when I had planned it. So the first three or four weeks was no weight because I, I had bought I bought the vest waiting for that to come. So I think the first maybe two, three weeks there was that, that wasn't weighted running. So that was just kind of building up the building up the distance. Because the max I've ever ran before I did this run, before I started training for this, was 21 kilometers, a half marathon. That was the most I ever ran. And to take this on, like 50 kilometers is a big jump. People are like, no, no, you shouldn't. You should, maybe you should just do go for a marathon first. You know, maybe try doing that first. And I mean, I could have, but that wasn't going to be a, a challenge that was big beyond me, you know. And I wanted to do something that was going to be seem extremely difficult. That I looked at it as like, wow, that's that's going to be tough. You know, 50 kilometer running is is tough. Like, you know, so I wanted something that was going to push me beyond where I, where I thought my capabilities were. But I still knew I could do it, you know. So that's why I did that. That's why I did it with the weight. Like I knew in my mind I could do it. You know, it's and that's why you got to set these goals that are bigger than you, bigger than what you think you can do. Because they're going to force you to to prepare and to take action beyond what you think you can do. You know, it's I could have easily went and done a, done, a, done a marathon. But I did it I in, in that time. But I was able to do the 50 kilometers in that time with that weight, you know, and I suppose we raised some serious money as well for charity. Like we raised six, almost six thousand euro now, and that's going to go a long way for both charities. And um, I, I suppose I don't, I don't want to get away from things I'm talking about. I was back. I was talking about the training and, and the preparation, so the mental preparation, um, but the physical. Yeah, so I, I see. I was doing a lot of weighted runs. I had done a, a, a nice few long runs. I was doing gym. I was training in the gym twice a week. That's so, so important that you keep ticking, ticking over with your um, gym training or strength training while doing a lot of running and endurance endurance sports that's what I that's what I learned if I hadn't been doing if I hadn't been doing the gym 
if I hadn't been looking after the, my mobility, strength, um, and those things, I would have picked up a lot of injuries along the way. Like I came out of this injury free, my training was injury free. The only little little thing that was at me for maybe a week and a half was my tibialis, the muscle in the front of your front of your leg, front of your shin. That muscle was sore for a while. Like I was, the, the run was on Saturday. By Tuesday, I felt completely back to normal. Hips, legs, muscles, everything were fine except that muscle in the front of my leg, the tibialis. They were, they were the only ones that were kind of painful for prolonged periods after the run. So a week and a half, and so like that's down to the work I was doing, mobility, foam rolling, making sure doing my strength training, having the right training plan in place. Like I was out running three or four days a week and in my gym training twice a week, you know, so everything was planned out. Everything was, like, everything was, yeah, structured. I had a strategy. I knew what I was doing. I was building it up each week. Took weeks of less volume so I could kind of um, reset and, you know, get rid of some, get rid of some fatigue. And in the last two weeks before the run, I took, that was like a taper. So I took it completely off, pulled my training back big time, so I did the 42 kilometer run two weeks before this one and then I had two weeks then of just steady runs a couple of gym sessions in there as well and it's letting my body recover heal up and get ready for the run and that's what it was I was fresh felt amazing going to the run and yeah everything fell into place everything went awesome and I was so I'm so so thankful for the community and everyone that got on board like at the, the I think it was the week before the run I had, I think I had nearly 2,000 euro raised, maybe just under it. And in my head, I was like, damn, I'm not going to be able to make the 5,000 at this rate. And then it was like, once I started, you know, the build up that week, the couple of days, I was posting more and more about it. The community was posting more and more about it. People were talking about it. And then this full, the, the charity donations that are coming in and in and in. And I think we we actually had... And on the day, there was obviously a lot of cash came in. There was people stopping on the road, giving me money as well, and everything. And you know, there was people, who, organizations were getting uh, money together between themselves and everything to to donate. And I think it was the next day we hit the 5,000. The day after, so on the Sunday, we hit the 5,000, which was epic. Between offline and online donations, we hit 5,000. And since then, now we're almost at 6,000. I think we're at 5,700, I think is where we're at, in terms of offline and online donations in total. So that's that's epic. And... They're so thankful that the community came on board. So thankful that you know I was able to do this and to help other people like this. A lot of people took inspiration from this, and I hope a lot more can take a lot of inspiration and motivation from what I've done. And so the big question that I got after was, "What's next?" And I'll be honest, that's a, that's a question I don't have an answer for right now because I want to get back to. I, I suppose I just want to get back to to hurling training. That's something I love doing, and I want to try a couple of other sports. I want to try and tried a few different things but I think once you start there's no going back I think it's it's is it that scene there's some scene and I'm not sure what what is it um, young Sheldon maybe maybe not maybe somebody else but it's like the father asks or the son asks the father about something and he's like son once you start there's no going back this means full commitment there, there was that scene it's kind of a meme now like you, you kind of use um, and that's kind of how it is it's like once you start there's no going back and I think it's that's happened with a lot of things I've done. Once you start, there's no going back, and it's always on to the next one. And you know, I really said I really kind of understand what um, why people do these kind of things. Like I knew doing this, like I wanted to do this because I wanted to set myself a big challenge that would push me physically and mentally. Because it was I've listened to a lot of David Goggins and these kind of people, and these guys take on these big, humongous physical challenges because they learn so much about themselves and they learn so much mentally and everything. That's kind of what I was chasing. That's kind of what I was after. So that was the aim of it, as well as raise some good money for charities. And I suppose, yeah, that's why I want to go and do bigger and better because I understand when when you go and do those things, there's a lot of learning in there. There's a lot of lessons in there. Like you can go learn a lot about yourself on those runs, like on those doing those challenges. Like even Mikey Power taking on the seventy-two hour charity challenge. Like I know he's going to learn so much about himself. He's going to learn so much about. You know, there's just so much learnings in there that obviously he raised a lot of money for charity, but he's also, like, there's so much learnings and lessons to be gained in there as well. Um, and that's why I kind of understand why people want want to do these things and keep doing bigger things because they want to keep learning because on that run, it's just, it was, it's it's a different, you're, 
you're in a different place. You're in a different zone. You're in a different kind of bubble almost. And it's how would you say like it's 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 not you running. It's not you in it. It's like something else takes over. This power that we have within us takes over. It starts driving for you. It starts doing it for you. And everyone has this 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 power. This thing inside them that once it's activated it's almost like they're superhuman like they're superman you know and people were calling me superhero after it they were calling me all different kind of words and it was such it was it was such a proud feeling really that like people were able to see that you know and I just want people to see that if you all have that like everyone has that like you watching this listening to this have that in you as well and it's about how do you activate that a lot of people probably don't know how to activate it it's something I'm learning how to activate and I suppose how I learn how to activate it is, is when you take on things that are bigger than yourself and you give yourself fully to them and that's when you really start to un, uncover the power that's within you. And that's kind of the, the best way I can explain it. I'm still trying to learn. Like everything I say, it's all me learning about myself, learning about the world, learning about myself, learning about everything, you know. And it's, I'll say things, they might never, some of, them, some of the things I say might be wrong. Some of, them, some of the things I might say might resonate. Some of the things I might say you might, mightn't understand at all you might think they're ludicrous they're they're ridiculous but again it's all I'm just trying to be real just trying to be honest and just trying to be just trying to be open to learning and to getting better you know and that was a big reason for for this run and um, yeah I suppose if you if you followed the journey if you watched the journey if you supported if you donated I massively appreciate you so grateful for you Um, if you haven't donated and you want to donate there's still a GoFundMe link that is still open we're going to leave it open for maybe another month and if you want to donate, I'll leave a link in under in the bio. If you're watching in Spotify or YouTube, I'll leave a link there. Um, or as you can reach out to me on Instagram, drop me a message and I'll send you the link. Um, because I think the aim is to get to 6,000. If we get there, depending on how fast we get there, I might leave it open for a little bit longer, maybe try and maybe even get to 6.5 or 7. So yeah, um, firstly, the aim was to get to 5,000. I didn't think I was going to get there at the rate it was going. And then we passed it so quickly, I was like, boom we could nearly get a couple of more thousand for the charities you know so that's kind of where we're at just going back to the preparation on like the mental and the physical side there was there was a couple of notes I took um, I think it was like a few days beforehand kind of like mindset fuel for the run so things I'd written down that I would need well not need things I'd written down that I could read if um, if I was struggling a little bit but I'd kind of say I hadn't struggled mentally at all through the whole challenge I was so focused and so in the zone and just everything was going so well and a couple of things I wrote down that I thought would be useful for myself and maybe might be useful for you is something that I read in one, of, in one of David Goggins' books. And it's, what if I can pull this off? You know, what if I can actually pull off? He, say, he says it in a way, it's like, what if I can actually pull off this miracle? You know, something so big that he's doing. And that's a, that's a question I kind of had in there. What if I can actually pull this off? You know, if there's a stage that I was struggling, that's something I was going to kind of look at and be like, yeah, imagine if I can actually pull this off, you know? A lot of people think you can't do it. And this was another one. Your brothers are in front of you. And you're going to let them see your weakness. You know, like for me, I wanted to be, I wanted to be an inspiration and I wanted to be like a, a like a big, how would you say it? Yeah, I wanted to be an inspiration for my brothers who were dead. I wanted them to look up to me and be like, you know, show them that, show them how strong I could be and how strong they can be and kind of show them, you know, inspire them to be stronger and to be better. Like, do you know what I mean? I want them to kind of look up and be like, yes, I can. I mean, I can be that strong. I, I can do those things. You know, I'm, I can be just like him kind of thing. You know, just be that kind of light and that guide and that leader almost for them because um, they mean so much to me. My brothers have, all all my brothers mean so much to me and it's, I think in this case, I moved away from home for a while. I moved, well, like once you move out, it's like, it's like anything. Once you move away from anything, you realise how, how valuable those things are to you. Like, and I moved away for a while. I didn't see them for, for a good bit. So when I was back, it showed me the value, like how how much it actually means to me, how much fun we have, how much crack we have, and it's just 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 the serious crack all the time. You know what I mean? And that's what it is: slagging each other, having having a banter. That's what it's all about, you know. So that was a big goal of mine as well. It's like I wanted to to just show no weakness and to show show this show be strong and just drive it on, regardless. Like you know, and that's kind of that was a big goal for me as well. And and to be able to run with my brother, that's why that meant so much was to be able to run with Peter, my little brother. Um, it was epic like you know because like like he ran 10k in total I think he ran a couple of kilometers near the start and then he ran almost 5 or 6 kilometers in one go 
from I think he yeah he ran a he ran a good shot of it. There was a couple of hills and he went away for food with my brother. But I think he ran just over ten k and he'd never ran before in his life. He does rowing, and he never ran before that, um, which is which is epic, like you know. So, um, one thing, another thing I had written down, um, I wrote God's strength is with me. He's running this with me. That's what I said, you know. God's strength is with me, and he's running this with me, and he was. That's what I told you at the start. I asked him to, to you know, take my feet, take my legs, and to you know, help me help me run each step with me, and that's kind of how it how it played out. Um, another one I use is probably from David Coggins. Um, you've only used forty percent of your of your of your potential, um, and that's what he says. When you when you feel like you're completely done, gassed out, you've only actually pushed. You've only reached forty percent of your capabilities, and that's something I just had in there as well, just to remind myself. And another one, I, this is from David Goggins' book as well, because I actually read his book, I think, a couple of weeks before the run, because I, whenever I read his book, it's just you get this new um, new drive and it's kind of re- reinstills that kind of... So he's He's been the major turning point in my... in why I take on this challenge, like why I do this, why I've done this challenge. He's been a big part of that, of like opening my, my mind up to taking on big things to, to grow and to get better, because... That's where he's learned a lot about himself and about the world is true. Everything he's done, the big massive runs he's done, um, being in the being in the military, being in the navy, you know. So another one from him was, "Don't let the governor limit your potential." So, how does how does he say that? It's like, you know, there's like a, there's like a, a voice or a thing inside you that kind of limits your potential. It's like, oh no, this is our this is our this is our cap. This is our max, and it's just to, it's just to kind of tell yourself, you no, know, don't let that voice or that thing. That part, that thing inside you stop you from going further, you know. Um, so that was one thing as well. And then there was a quest. I had a quest of myself. Do you want to be the guy that quits? You know, because I've quit a lot of things I've done. I fought. I've fallen short of a lot of things I've done in my life. And this is a question: like, do I want to be that guy that, again that quits? Do I want to be the guy that gives up? Do I want to be the guy that doesn't follow through? You know, on, on the on the thing he says. And um, that was another question I had in there. And then another one was rest at the end, not in the middle. And there are just a couple of things I had in there, you know. Um, I didn't I didn't actually end up looking at this at all. I think I just maybe writing them down was almost a preparation and kind of had them in my mind. Yeah, I think I think I covered these ones already. So what I learned from the run, the power of my mind. Like in my mind, the run was already done and it was already easy. And that's so true. Like before I even went out and ran it, I already knew it was going to be easy. I already knew it was pretty much done, you know. Um, and that's kind of how I approached it in my mind. And that's probably why it was so easy. And then the next one, the the power within to make the run look so easy. You know, the power within me that I was able to kind of extract and pull out to make that run look so easy. And um, yeah, they're, they're kind of some key learnings. There's, there's other things, you know, there's, you like I've come out a different person from that. Like I went into it, but when I finished it, I was a different person as well. And, you know, even that's, you know, like obviously I was kind of the organizer of the whole event and everything and, Kind of, I was kind of the main person, but I didn't see myself as the main person. I didn't want, like, I didn't see this as this isn't my run. I'm doing this. Everyone come and look at me and support me. It wasn't that's when it wasn't how I wanted it to to be. So even when people were like, "Oh, your run, your run," I was, like, or you know, the, your your big run. It's I was almost like, yeah, no, it's like I was kind of make. I was kind of in my mind. I was like, no, it's kind of our run, our 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 challenge, our thing. Kind of, it was it was for the charities and it was for the community and. It wasn't for myself. I wasn't trying to do it to like, oh, look at me, guys. I'm so good. I ran 50k. That wasn't, that was, that wasn't what was in my mind. Like I wanted to to do this to show men that you can really push your limits, push your boundaries and go beyond what you think. Just by putting in a little bit of effort, you know, setting some goals, setting some things that are bigger than you. Because when you set things that are bigger than you, they force you to, to act and to take action bigger than yourself, you know. And doing something as well as bigger than you, like this, like taking on something like you can do something and do it for yourself but the fact that I wasn't doing it for myself I was doing it for the community I was doing it for the charities I think that's that's why I understand people doing these big charity events as well is because you're taking on a mission that's bigger than you and that's how people get behind you you know people people won't get behind you if they're, if, if you're just doing something that that benefits yourself but when it benefits the community when it benefits somebody else and they can see that you're that you're really on this mission to do this that's how people can get get behind you like even Mikey Power on his 72 hours charity challenge, we're all getting behind him. We're all, we all want to see him smash this thing because he's on a mission to go and smash a 72 hour charity challenge. And 
you can see that everyone is, you know, they're ready to be part of this with him. Like, and I'm going to be part of it with him as well the whole weekend. I can't wait for it. And um, there's going to be so much learning in it for him. There's going to be so much learning and everything, you know. And it's, it's going to be the first time I've climbed four of Ireland's probably biggest mountains. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But I think that's kind of the, the recap. That's kind of everything. I didn't kind of script this too much. It's kind of, I'm trying to go with the, the minds or the, that's kind of how I want to approach all the podcasts I do, I don't, I don't really want, to, I don't want to go in there with a script of like this is what I want to do. Just go in there with a couple of topics, maybe, and wherever it goes, wherever it kind of leads, that's where it has to go, you know. And it's kind of yeah, letting it flow, letting it come out from within, and that's kind of how I let, let try and let most of my podcasts um, roll, if that makes sense. So it's kind of more real, more authentic, more genuine, and something that will Russell, a good friend of mine, um, and almost a mentor of mine as well, is be real. He has cups. He has like cups, cups that he has um, that that logo on. He's got boxing gloves with it on. He's got uh, t-shirts with it on. Let's be real, and that's 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 what we're lacking in this world is just being real. You know, just being. This is who I am. This is what I am. I don't give. A, I don't give an f what you think. I don't give an f what you do. This is this is what I want to do. Let's be real. Say say it how it is. And if 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 you be real, then you're you can't lose anything. You can't lose anything for being real, being authentic, and being yourself. Um, truly, truly, you can't. But um, that's where we're gonna leave it. I'd say we'll leave it there. I appreciate you listening, and as well, give me some feedback on these on these solo episodes. If you like, if you like listening to me, if you like listening to me talk on my own, if you like listening to me share some wisdom, share some value. Hopefully, I, hopefully, I am sharing some wisdom and inspiration and stuff for you. But essentially, if you can go away with this with a new with a new way of looking at things a new way of thinking about things then that's 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 me fulfilled and that's my job done here because that's what I want to do is give you those ideas give you those 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 little things that you can take away and use in your own life you know and that's what that's what life is all about getting better learning from others so that you can improve so then that you can help others improve you know and and if you can bring people along with you the same way as able to bring people along with me in the 50 50 500 then that's I think that's what life is all that that's what life is all about, you know. And um sometimes we can complicate it too much. But yeah. I appreciate you being here. Would love some feedback on this on this episode. Comment below. Give it a give it a rating on Spotify. Um I'd really appreciate that. Um we would have to get it out to more people so that we can help more people. And as always, I just want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next one.